This is Leah, Girls in Eureka coordinator at YWCA Minneapolis. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm really excited to welcome you to our next installment of Woman of the Week. This week's Woman of the Week is Joy, uh, and I'm going to pass it over to her to introduce herself. So Joy, if you could share um, your name, pronouns, and a fun fact about yourself so we could get to know you a little better. Yeah, no problem. Hi, everyone. I am Joy Machado. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. Um, one fun fact about me, I was trying to think of what I should share. And I think along the themes of what we're talking about today, I wanted to share with everyone that I am a mom of two teenagers, but I have always been the working parent. So my partner and I, um, Steve, have had reverse roles throughout my children's life. So I've always been the working parent and my husband has always been the stay at home parent. So we are kind of a reverse role household. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Joy, and really great to have you here today. If you could tell us about your career pathway, a couple highlights along the way, things that you uh, experienced from, you know, ending your education uh, up until now, um, we would love to hear it. I grew up in Missouri, um, so a small town just south of Kansas City. I went to college. I was trying to get as far away as possible from my small town. So I ended up going to school um, at the University of California, Santa Barbara. So it's as far as way as you can go without, you know, getting into the ocean. So I accomplished that goal of getting away um, from Missouri. And there I was actually pre-med. So I was um, a biological science major, did all the science classes, um, did okay but really uh, didn't feel like that was my passion in terms of what I wanted to study. And I was in the Peace Corps in Paraguay in South America for two years, um, where I was a health educator, um, lived in a very rural town, um, was able to live amongst um, Paraguayans, get to know them. Um, it was a really great time. Um, so I was two years there. And then I, after the Peace Corps, I did move to Minnesota and did some various work in Minnesota, um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I think I decided I didn't wanna to go to medical school, um, but wanted to stay in the public health realm. So I ended up going to the University of Minnesota um, graduate program for public health. But in the meantime, I had worked at a nonprofit um, before graduate school in early childhood education, um, went to public health graduate school, and then after graduate school, um, worked for a small nonprofit um, called um, Working in Teen Pregnancy Prevention as well as Teen Parenting. So helping to support parents or teen parents as well as preventing teen pregnancy. Um, and after that, I worked in, um, I went to Ramsey County and worked in public health there in the environmental health section. And I think for me, one of the highlights is being able to experience um, different types of work. So working in small community nonprofits and then going to a large uh, public agency for Ramsey County gave me a good experience in trying to understand what kind of work I wanted to do and where I wanted to work. Um, through my work at Ramsey County Public Health, I was able to uh, meet some people who worked in the consulting world. And I had no idea what that meant to be a consultant. Um, so I think one of the best $20 I've ever spent is I took one of the consultants out to lunch and I just asked her questions of, what does your work entail? What does it mean to be a consultant? And just trying to understand that world. Um, and two weeks later, that consulting firm called me and asked if I would be interested in joining them um, to work with them. And so because I had spent that $20 and um, bought someone lunch to find out more about them, um, this has led to my path now of where I am. So I am a consultant. I have been a consultant for 12 years. And if you aren't familiar with what a, what a consultant is, it's basically um, doing work, um, but more of a private industry and um, doing different projects for different companies, different organizations. So I don't work for a public agency, I don't work for a nonprofit, but we work with them. So we are hired to do specific projects, um, probably usually for some short term, some long term projects. Um, but what I like about it is the flexibility in my schedule as well as the variety of work that I'm able to do. And so for me, my specialty being a consultant is communications and public engagement and primarily around work um, around the transportation and transit industry. So if any of you are in uh, Minneapolis and have seen the construction going on 
on 35W, the big highway construction project. Um, my company does the communications work for that. So we are hired by MnDOT to be able to communicate to residents, to businesses about the construction work that is happening. So again, what I've really, really enjoyed about being a consultant is just um, the variety of projects. And I can say that in my 12 years of being a consultant, every single day has been different. I probably have not had a same day ever <laughs> in my 12 years. Um, so that's what I like about it. It's just a variety. Um, I never know what's gonna be happening um, a month from now, whether we have uh, more work or less work. So it's always, it's always a roller coaster and it's, it's very exciting. Thanks, Joy. It's, it's really fascinating to me to hear the kind of, not only the variety in your day to day, but also the variety in your path. And I think I remember back to when I was in high school and middle school and thinking about what I wanted my career to be and imagined that everyone's career path was totally linear and they always knew what that end goal was. And so your story to me really illustrates that you can have a very winding path and not ever know what your end goal might be and still have a really fulfilling career. Um, so I don't know, is there more of that that you want to speak to? Because I think, I think your experience really illustrates how, how that works in real life. Well, and I agree. And I think the lesson for me is you're, you know, so 30 plus years ago, I don't, you know, I was interested in health and how much that has changed in the last 30 years and how different experiences in my past have led me to where I am today. So I think the message for me is just to be open to different experiences. And if you know, you'll never know what excites you or what interests you. Um, I do wish that when I was in college that someone would have told me that uh, I would be more interested in communications, um, public engagement work. Um, Cause like I said, I was a pre-med. So I took a lot of science classes that I probably wouldn't have had to take. <laughs> I would have had a better time in college and not had studied so much. Um, but yeah, I, you just never know what interests you, especially at such a young age. And so to just be open to different experiences and understanding what are the, what are those pieces of those, your experiences that you really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, in the field that you're in now, like you've said, I know, I know you do a lot of work around transportation. One of those big projects your, your company is working on is the biggest construction project in Minnesota right now, maybe. Um, could you talk a little bit about who you end up working with, what kind of spaces you're going into as a consultant, um, and what it's like to be a female leader in those spaces? Yes, yeah, so a lot of the work that we do is um, construction work or planning work and typically in the past um, it has been a male dominated field especially with engineering um, we also work with a lot of planners and that I would think used to be a male dominated uh, career path as well so a lot of city planning urban planning um, but I have seen in my 12 years the changes that has happened especially with the planning world um, I do have a project where um, there are more women who are in the leadership role than there are men. Um, so that example, it's called the Gold Line, and it's a new bus rapid transit line that would run from St. Paul, downtown St. Paul, to Woodbury. And so that is led by Metro Transit, who leads our transit industry, um, our transit system in the Twin Cities. And so the project manager of that project is a female. The deputy project manager is a female. And then they have an engineering consultant on the project who's helping to design it and their lead engineer is a female. So that has really been great to see the transition of a woman dominated field in, in terms of the leadership of a lot of these projects. But on the flip side, we also work in a lot of highway road construction and that still is primarily dominated in a, um, by by males, um, it just because of the typical work, it's actually construction work, it's civil engineer work, where you see a lot of uh, more men attracted to that field. So it is a little bit different um, to walk into a room and you are the only female um, in that room. But I think from my experience, it's just being able to understand that, you know, they are people too, and that you are smart and you are strong and you are, um, have knowledge that you wanna share 
and be confident in um, knowing what your job is and what your role is into walking into a room that's, that's male dominated. Mm -hmm. Was that something that came easily to you when you first walked into those spaces? Because I think what you said is so important that reflecting on our own place in, in those spaces and having confidence in ourselves that we're strong and bold and have something to contribute is so important, but it takes a little while to, to get to that point of understanding. Was there, at the beginning, what, uh, were there any skills that you were practicing or anything that really helped you to kind of hold your own in those spaces? Um, I think for me, it's always been um, being able to project that, you know, maybe in my head, I didn't know the knowledge, but I was going to find out. Um, so I think being able to project the confidence that um, I know what I'm doing, even though maybe inside I'm not quite sure <laughs> if I know the correct information, but knowing that I was going to find that out. Um, but also, entering it with a positive attitude that we're all there for the same reason and working towards the same goal. And so for looking at anyone you're working with as um, these are partners, these are people who want to help each other. So being able to have even the confidence to go to someone, whether they're male or female, but in, in um, different roles to say, I don't, I don't quite understand this, can you explain this to me? Um, and, and I think that will help them to understand oh, this person really just wants to do good work, wants to understand what's happening. And so I think, you know, with an open mind approach of people you work with, that we're all there to help each other. I think that has helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. What are some of the skills that you feel like you practice in your everyday work now? Um, well, I think right now, you know, um, right now with everything going on, I think patience. <laughs> <laughs> um, so things, you know, aren't happening as quickly as you want it to happen sometimes. So I think patience and flexibility, um, especially in this day and age. But, you know, whether you're working um, with a lot of men or just different types of people, uh, patience and flexibility is always a good thing to have. Um, and also understanding, you know, people work differently. And so to understand what how people uh, work and um, what helps motivate them is important. And that varies from person to person. Um, and so I think also, like I mentioned, just having an open mind. How are you being strong, smart, and bold in your life right now? For me, one of my greatest skills is being able to listen and to understand where people are, are coming from. Um, and I think being able to uh, adjust how I react to people, um, how to, you know, the words I use um, help me to be uh, a good leader in terms of trying to understand the people I work uh, with and work um, and who I manage. So I think that has helped me. But also, you know, it's, it, it's taken a lot in terms of being confident in speaking your opinion and your mind. Um, you know, as you grow and you start working with people or managing people, you have to be able to um, be able to articulate, I think, uh, clearly what you want and, and do it in a kind way. And I think that has, is what I've grown in the last few years of understanding. Um, I, want, I want people to succeed and I want to help them succeed. Um, but I also need to be clear on what I need from people and what I need from them. So being able to openly express your needs, I think, has helped me. You're your own hero. You're your own supporter. And to grow yourself and take time to understand who you are and to um, strengthen, you know, your mind, your body, and your soul will only help you and the people around you, the people you live with, work with, and love. Um, that is my advice for young women is, you know, work on yourself um, because that is so important um, for, for anything you do. Being able to kind of be flexible in your elevator speech. So, you know, for me, if I'm talking to someone who, is let's say like an elected official or someone 
who is um, you know, a leader in our community, then that elevator speech is much different than if I was talking to a colleague um, or even a friend. But I think understanding um, your purpose of what you want to say to them. Um, a lot of times for me, for my um, work, when I meet people, especially in my business work, it's to market myself and my company. So what am I trying to sell them on in terms of, I'm a, you know, I'm a great communicator, I'm a people person, and I do good, reliable work. And so I think thinking about what are your top three things that you want to highlight um, is always helpful. And I think that has helped me too. And in a lot of um, talks or speeches, you know, you kind of want to be able to share everything, but if you limit to like top three, top five, then to always keep um, on those points, I think that is helpful. Thank you so much for being our Woman of the Week, Joy. You shared such great advice on how to follow your own path and have confidence in yourself. That's one of the, the main points of our work with Girls Inc. as well. So really appreciate you sharing what that looks like in your life with our participants and with everyone who's watching.